Welcome to this session. In this session, we introduce the concept of uh, mathematical logic. We'll briefly discuss about uh, the origin of mathematical logic and then give the definition of what we mean by proposition and give examples of propositions and non examples. So, mathematical logic is a study of the processes used in mathematical deduction. So, to undive that. Mathematical logic. So processes used in mathematical deduction is what we refer to as mathematical logic. And then the subject has the origin in philosophy. And indeed, it is also a legacy from philosophy that we can distinguish between semantic reasoning and syntactic reasoning. Now, when we say syntactic uh, semantic reasoning, uh, this is what is true. And then syntactic reasoning is what can be shown. So mathematical logic or logic helps us to distinguish between what is true and what can be shown. So mostly logic is used to establish validity of argument. This is the core objective of logic to help establish the validity of any given argument. So the rules of logic are give precise meaning to mathematical statements. And in addition to mathematical reasoning, logic has also other applications, say in the design of computer circuits, construction of computer programs, verification of correctness of computer programs and many, many other things. So uh, we are interested in what is so-called the mathematical reasoning and creativity. Now, uh, human beings are expected to express themselves creatively in various fields. So mathematics is one of these fields, not just because of its nature, but the manner of its presentation. So then now, uh, in this vein, we have two kinds of reasoning. It's what we call inductive, and deductive reasoning. So 
So reasoning or drawing conclusions can be classified in two main categories. So one is inductive reasoning, and then the other one is what we call deductive reasoning. So when a person makes observations and, um, and on the basis of these observations reaches a conclusion, then we say that he or she has reasoned inductively. So this is from observations. And then from observations, you make conclusion. So we say that you are reasoning inductively. For example, if a young child touches a hot stove and concludes that stoves are hot, then we say that uh, the child has reasoned inductively. That by much of touching a hot stove, the child gets burned. And then the child will conclude that whenever you touch any stop, any hot stove, then <clears throat> all, sto uh, all stoves are always hot. Or whenever they see a stove, then they'll always uh, conclude that that stove is hot from the previous experience or observation. So that's an example of inductive reasoning. And then deductive reasoning proceeds from assumption rather than experience. So deductive now, we use assumptions instead of experiences or observations. So it is always, or it is usually by inductive reasoning that mathematical results are discovered and it is by deductive reasoning that they are proved. So inductive helps in discovery uh, while deductive helps in the proof of those uh, given uh, statements or results in mathematics. So uh, inductive reasoning is essential to mathematical activity and to engage in it, one makes observations, gets guesses, and then makes conjecture. For example, given a sequence of numbers, say two, four, six, eight, and then if you're asked to get the next two numbers, then probably from this pattern, we see that the numbers are varying by two, so the next would be 10, and then next would be 12. And then for deductive reasoning, arguments used in mathematical proofs most often proceeds from some basic principles which are known or can be assumed. So such arguments are deductive. So in mathematics, there's what we call proof. So proof is simply a convincing argument. Uh, maybe we can give it as a statement. So it's a convincing argument for a sequence of steps an explanation and communication of ideas or a line of argument sufficient to convince a person of the validity of a certain result. So this is what we call a proof. So as, as we will point out later on in the chapter, uh, this proof is also a proof or to prove that a given result is not true is also another way of proving. So next now, uh, let's define what we call 
a proposition. So proposition. So proposition is simply a declarative sentence. Now, when we say a declarative sentence, we mean a sentence that declares a fact. that is either true or false, but not both, this is very key. So any declarative sentence that can be classified as either true or false, but not both true and false at the same time is called a proposition. So propositions are also called statements. Propositions are also called statements. So the term statement and proposition are synonyms. So then now we are going to discuss uh, examples of sentences which are propositions or which are statements and those which are not. I remember the key thing is that you need to have a declarative sentence that can either be classified as true or false, but shouldn't be giving room to have both true and false as uh, the truth value. So examples. Of statements. Or propositions. So first one. Add is the closest. Planet to the sun. This is a statement because we can determine its truth value. Or we know that the closest planet to the sun is not Earth. So this is a statement whose truth value is false. And then number two, we can have say one plus two is given by three. We know that one plus two is always three. So this is a statement which is having a truth value of true. Number three, if we say Nairobi is the capital city of Rwanda, this is a statement because we can either classify it as true or false. And we know from the fact that the city Nairobi is found in Kenya. So saying Nairobi is the capital city of Rwanda is false, but can be classified as false and two at the same time. So this is also a statement. Number four, tomorrow is my birthday. We are sure that everyone has just one day in a year that is his or her birthday. So the person saying this one will either be giving a true statement or false statement regarding the day of tomorrow. So the statement or the sentence can either be true or false, but it can be true and false at the same time. You can say that tomorrow is your uh, birthday and at the same time tomorrow is not your birthday. So that's why classifying that one is a statement. Number five, white rhinos 
will be extinct. in the year 5430. Now, it will take many years for us to determine the truth value of this declarative sentence, but at the end of the day, uh, it will either be true or false, but not both at the same time. So that qualifies to be called a statement. Number six, scientist by the name Euclid was right-handed. So we are assuming that this any normal person can either be left-handed or right-handed. Despite the fact that we didn't see the scientist by the name Euclid, but then we are sure that when we say he was right-handed, it's either true or false, but cannot be true and false at the same time. So that is also a proposition. Number seven, sugar causes to decay. Now, from science point of view, we know that it is true that sugar causes to decay. So that qualifies to be called a proposition. And then eight, it is raining. Now we know that at any given time, it is either it can either be true or false that it is raining, but it can't have two answers at the same time. We can't say it is true and false at the same time. So if it's raining, it's raining. If it's not raining, it is not raining. So that's also a proposition. And then six is less than 24. This is a fact. And then uh, more other examples we can say. 10, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 is also a statement. 11, 2 plus 2 equals to 3 is also a statement. We we'll know if truth value is false. And then 12, <coughs> other example, you can say drilling. For oil cost the nurses to be extinct, to become extinct. This has just, uh, this can be classified as true or false, but not both true and false. And then number 13 x plus 2 equals to 2x when x equals to negative 2 is a proposition because we are specific with what x we are referring to. Number 14, sun rises in the east. This is a proposition. And then we can say 15, 2 is less than 5. This is also a proposition. And you can give as many, many examples as you like. Let's give now examples. So statements such as come here. These are commands. Commands are not propositions. Number two, if you say keep off the grass. This can also not be classified as true or false, so it's not a statement. Number three, if we say, what time is it?
this a question which cannot be classified as true or false, so it is not a statement. X plus two equals to four it is not a statement because depending on the value of X you are referring to, this thing can actually be true and false at the same time. Uh, since it could be true or false, depending upon the numerical value assigned to X. Number five, if we say she lives in Nairobi, it's not a proposition since it could be true and false at the same time, depending upon the person to whom, because we are not specific, she refers to. Other non-example proposition, we have look out. So exclamations are also not propositions. And then number seven, did you finish your homework? This is also not a statement because it's a question. And then number eight, don't say that. This can be classified as true or false. And then Another non-example, how far is it to the next term? This cannot be classified as a proposition because we can't determine its truth value. And at the same time, it's a question. Questions are not propositions. X plus two equals to two X is not a proposition because it might be true or false at the same time, depending on the miracle value assigned to X. And then other non examples. If we say, read carefully. is also not a proposition. Number 12, x plus two equals to four. We, have, we can classify this as true or false, depending on the numerical value of x assigned to, and uh, numerical value assigned to x. If you say x plus y equals to z, this is also not a proposition. And if you give a statement, uh, a sentence like this, this sentence is false. This can also not be classified as true and false. But this is a non statement, or this is an opinion, can be justified. 15. If you say, It is too cold today. So we can't declare any truth value either true or false for this given uh, sentence. So this is not a statement. And you can give as many examples as you like. 
So uh, one key thing that you can always remember is that imperatives, interrogatives, questions, and exclamations. are not propositions. So that can as well help you to do some classification of statements and non-statements. So whenever you see a sign that has this sign or this sign, automatically that disqualifies it from being a proposition. So every statement, the truth or falsity of a proposition is called truth value. And then the truth value of a proposition can either be true or false. True, given as T, or we can use number one or false given as capital F or digit zero, but not both. So we'll be using T to denote true and F to denote false. And then propositions. are conventionally symbolized using letters, say, A, B, C, E, T, C, or you can use uppercase letters, or you can even use subscripts or you can use uh, say q1 q2 etc so for example uh, we can say we call proposition p <coughs> at is the closest planet to the sun. So we are assigning this proposition letter P. Or we can say Q is a proposition one plus two equals to four. Or we can say we assign R to be the proposition Nairobi is the capital city. of Rwanda. Or we can say uh, K is a proposition, it is raining. Or we can use, say A1 is a proposition, put 17 is an integer. So that is how we assign or how we denote or how we symbolize the truth uh, 
the statements or the propositions. So next session, we'll be discussing about logical connectives, how we simply uh, connect two simple statements to form compound statements. Thank you.